Mother Nature strikes again, shutting down the wood yard. Last night we had a winter storm blow through and drop, uh, I don't know, like six, seven inches of snow on the ground. You can see the Easton made 37D conveyor is really buried now. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to dig that thing out or not. Now we'll be getting to that here in the next couple days, but I will tell you one thing, the rock star when it comes to moving, pushing, plowing snow, is that right there. The Top Dog Attachment 72 inch utility bucket. That thing works great. It is awesome for pushing snow, moving it around. Uh, I'll show you here in a little bit uh, where I had to push the snow to. Is it pushing snow or plowing snow? Sometimes I get that mixed up. I don't know, but I've never pushed your mom. Here's my other snow removal crew. Boss man has <laughs> a little, it's called the Snow Joe. And he has been working all afternoon moving snow. You can see just how much he's got done here. Just cleared all of this out. What are you, what are you on now, like the 10th the battery charge? It's, it's a battery powered little snow, little snow show, thrower. So I ended up bringing all the snow from the driveway and then we pushed all of this snow here on this little pathway up to the driveway and up to the woodshed. With that big 72 inch utility bucket, uh, we were able to Push everything in to a nice big pile. Oh, now he's adding to it. <laughs> I think it would take him a while to get that pile that big with just that little machine. So yeah, I got all the snow pushed into a pile and then boss man wants to hollow that out uh, and make himself a little snow fort here coming up this weekend. Just real quick before I get to uh, what I want to actually show you, I'll show you another thing. In the koi pond is completely frozen over. We've got two bubblers uh, down in the water here, kind of in the shallow end, where it's probably only about, uh, I don't know, six, seven inches deep. So apparently, from what I've researched, your pond, if you have a koi pond, it can completely freeze over if it's deep enough. Uh, and then your fish will be fine, but there needs to be an opening or two somewhere in the pond for like any gases or things that build up in the water from like the breakdown of like leaves and stuff like that, or even like the fish. Uh, there just needs to be an opening. So last week when it was down in the single digits and below zero, these two holes, we, we had to come out and keep breaking them open. Um, I also have one down here in the skimmer that is also keeping the skimmer from not freezing up. So yeah, just uh, underneath that tote, there's the pump, an air pump that just keeps, uh, we've got two air stones in this hole and then one over there. And it just keeps that water from freezing up. And hopefully come this spring, down there in the deep end, all the fish will still be alive. But yeah, that's just kind of crazy that uh, they said in the winter, the fish will kind of like just go dormant and they don't need to eat. You don't need to feed them. They'll just survive down there in the water all winter long, as long as the pond doesn't completely freeze over. Uh, and in the early part of like when it was first starting to freeze, uh, it was getting cold, you would, you could look out there and like all the fish, it looked like the pond was one big ice cube because all the fish were just in like, wherever they were, they were kind of spread out, but they all were just still, they were not moving. Not even their side fins, nothing. They were just all perfectly still, kind of spread out. It was kind of crazy, but we shall see come spring. Anyhow, what I wanted to show you guys uh, and kind of talk about just for a bit. Um, when I was burning the pine in the Crown Royal 7300 MP here, um, 
I did this, I already did this the other day, so I'm going to do it again, so I know, but uh, the pine was not fully dry, and there must have been a lot of moisture still in that wood, uh, because you're going to see in a second here when I open up that ash clean out door, uh, there's going to be, I'm thinking there's going to be quite a bit of water in there. And this has kind of been a debate going on, and I've been on uh, a couple of the Facebook groups for Crown Royal, and a lot of people experience this, uh, where you'll have condensation happening inside the firebox. And someone in the comments, I forget who it was, explained this very well. And I'm going to try to explain it as well, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do as good a job. But what happens, what he was saying is that, like, there are low spots in the firebox with that ash tray down in the bottom. And so if any moisture gets cooked out of the wood, it's in the air inside the firebox. And it can find those lower spots where it could be cooler because it would be below, you know, the fire. And if the fire is not burning, obviously it could cool off and then condense. And then that water will collect down in the bottom. And if you think about it, even well-seasoned wood is typically at what? 20% moisture. So there's always moisture in your wood. And so it does end up kind of collecting down in that ashtray uh, I've been noticing. And I think, <laughs> well, the first time I checked a couple days ago after burning pine for the first day, there was a little bit in there. And so now I finished up burning all that pine, and I think that stuff was full of moisture. But let's find out. All right, so here is the ash cleanout. I've got a little pan down here to catch this water. Uh, and like I said, I'm thinking there's going to be uh, a fair amount. But let's find out. Oh, oh yes, indeed, there was. So the pine definitely had some moisture in it. It was high moisture wood. And I'm guessing it was probably 30, mid 30%. If you think about this, the fire is way up here. So this is a low spot for condensation to collect. So there is, what is it, two, three days. Three days worth of burning. So you're probably thinking that is not normal and that is not good to have that much water coming out the bottom of your boiler. But from all the research I've done, from reading all kinds of posts about this uh, in Crown Royal forums and groups, and from again having some feedback in the comments, it, it does actually kind of make sense when you think about the low spots inside there and when the fire is not burning, um, you know, it doesn't stay hot in there. If there's no fire burning, there would be the opportunity for some of that moisture that gets cooked out of the wood to then cool off and condense back into liquid form and collect down in that ashtray. Now, one thing I should note is that a little over a week ago when we were in the single digits, for a couple days. Uh, I did check that and there wasn't nearly as much water that would come out. There'd be a little bit, but not that much. And so I think that does have a, uh, an effect on how much water condenses inside there, just like what the temperatures are outside, how much the stove is cycling between uh, you know, burn cycles and idling. So I don't know, just uh, another little tidbit that when it was really cold, and when I was burning this oak, there wasn't as much water down in the, uh, that ashtray. But now that I was uh, burning that pine, <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of moisture in that wood, I can, I can bet. I bet if I would have thawed one of those pieces out and split it, like I said, I think it would have been somewhere in the 30s uh, in moisture percentage. So I just noticed the water temp is at 170, so it is about to start uh, a burn cycle to get that water temperature back up to 180. So I will leave you guys with that. We'll take a look inside and see how much wood is left from this morning. Uh, it's about five o'clock now. I think I filled up around eight. 
Uh, so we'll take a look inside, check that out, and I will leave you with watching this thing get the fire back burning. And if you're wondering, that is real time. That is not sped up. So it gets going pretty good.